Morning folks, how are we doing? Back here again with Amber Lynn Reed. Well, actually, this one is Destiny. This is the, the clarity one. Uh, look, I wasn't really sure how to do this. Um, anyone who doesn't know on my main channel, I post a community tab post because I only really had set it because I intended to stream that night. However, I had to cancel it last minute because there's a family emergency in real life. There's still kind of issues in the background. So I've been very busy recently. Um, so that's kind of why I disappeared. Uh, I really only mentioned it on that channel because I had the live stream. So I never even thought to really mention it on this channel. I do apologize for that. Um, however, uh, I decided I'm going to sit down here today and plow through all of the live streams because I just didn't watch them because I'm too busy to sit there for two hours, two and a bit hours to listen to Amberlynn just mumble away. Even at two times speed, that's still like an hour of content to watch of just nothing. But when I went through, I started taking notes because I was originally saying, going, oh, it's okay you talk about it. And then I, I realized pretty quickly I'm, I'm going to remember very little of this because it generally it is so fucking boring and then i'll finish off this is the last live stream in the lot it's clarity it is um destiny coming out and giving their final opinion on the whole thing so i thought fuck it why not i'll just cover the destiny thing as the last one and you guys know this might be five minutes long after i start covering the destiny thing because a lot of what she talks about is boring too and i might upload this as a little separate short little video just quickly catching you guys up and the next thing is going to be a reaction to the next amberlynn thing and then possibly a foodie beauty thing because i think the blackouts lifted on her so might do that might do a live stream tonight who knows we'll see what we do guys but i have a little pile of notes here so i guess we're just going to read through them uh so it's going to be a bit of a mess but I, I wrote down um, that she's always such an amazing and good person, basically just too good a person, just way too nice of a person. Pretty much the problem is that she's just too nice of a person, because that is just the recurring theme in all of her lives, is that she just keeps telling us over and over again, she is just such an amazing, lovely person. Uh, the first thing that actually encouraged me to take a note was the next bit, where she randomly said that... It's weird that people call her out for sticking in extra ads in her videos because it's basically the same as someone who does like a nine to five doing overtime work. And it's like, bro, you have no idea what overtime even means if that's what you think. Like when you make your minute, your video eight minutes and one second long and stick four mid rolls in, that's not you doing overtime by making your fans watch more ads. What it, if, if she made two videos a day, maybe you could consider that over time. But it, no, no. She just makes you, the viewer, watch more ads. And somehow that is her doing more work. It's, it's fucking baffling. Um, obviously, I wrote down that she, like the, a lot of my notes are just saying that she is just repeatedly telling us she's the nicest person in the entire world. Which is kind of funny because then she got called transphobic. Because she said that she would date a trans woman. But then someone like said, oh, well, you date this like trans woman? They're like, no, they have a dick. And then, like, she says it's not transphobic. And honestly, like, with that whole thing, I, I, I think this is all just a muddy issue. I think it's all just silly that people are just getting offended on other people's behalf and, like, trying to force people to have certain opinions. I think that whole thing is kind of silly and it's just something people should just, just stay away from. Especially asking about people's, like, sexuality and all. I do think it's a wee bit weird. Like, oh, but would you date with this person as, like, a purity test? I find that shit kind of really weird anyway. So I kind of am on her, her side for that specific bit. But the biggest problem is then she turns it around and says, oh, well, you're homophobic. For questioning my lesbianism by asking me about what women I date and stuff. So you're you're all homophobes and also you're all fat phobes. And it's like it's so weird that when you get criticism, it just isn't real. Like the, the phobe bit doesn't exist and isn't real, and it's ridiculous people would claim that about you. But then all of your haters, you will just smear them all as homophobic and, and fat phobic. Kind of, kind of silly, kind of double standards, which is so weird because she mentions double standards a billion times during her 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 live streams, and actually she never has double standards. Uh, she fake cries throughout it repeatedly, and it's hilarious because that towards the end of the first live stream, someone points out that it's a very clear fake cry, and she fucking instantly stops crying, and she goes, "Well, I can't even fake cry. So how how, how is this a fake cry? I can't even fake cry. So uh, like she just owned them. Like oh oh, but burned you. I can't fake cry. So it's clearly not a fake cry. And it's like." Why would we believe you? <laughs> like, just, why would we believe you? Um, she mixed up her stories repeatedly. Like uh, the the essay stories that she said. Which she's like, actually it wasn't assault. It was just harassment for some of them. But she keeps changing the stories over and over and over again. Until like she get, keeps getting pushed back. Because she, she keeps building on the father father's friends ones where she keeps building on it by saying it's harassment and then the next slide seems to say well they were annoying me like verbally and i was scared of them and that means it was assault even though she's like misquoting it because like the fear of assault is like a fear of physical force being applied to you that is what uh, that's what assault is it's like the whole assault and battery thing battery is the physical force being applied and uh, uh, done on you pretty much and the assault is the fear of the battery happening to you that's what assault is but she says oh it's assault because i was just scared 
in general, which is not the same thing. But then in the last live stream, she upgraded to like, oh yeah, then they would come up and they were stroking me and rubbing me and stuff like that. And I was like, oh, so we started off as it was being like, not what happened, you didn't say it at all. To, oh, actually, I did say it in the next live stream. To, oh, well, actually, I did say it. However, technically, it is assault anyway because I was scared. To actually, yeah, it actually did as it was assault because they were actually touching me and rubbing me up and stuff like that. And it's like, bro, in four live streams, you changed the story four times. <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? Um, she, she often will just say stuff and then say, my therapist agrees with me. My therapist agrees with me. Like, I, like I've seen so many of these fucking lol cows going, who are going through therapy all say that. Like, up. Oh, can't criticize me. Oh, oh, can't, oh, my therapist agrees with me. Uh-oh, that means I'm right. And it's like, bro, firstly, a lot of people don't even believe you're actually in therapy. And secondly, even if your therapist agrees with you, we have no idea of the context of your conversation or what, like, information you give them. So it doesn't actually mean anything. It doesn't mean anything to us whatsoever. Especially when she starts talking about, like, oh, well, the thing is, actually, my therapist agrees with me that, um, you know, when I, my, my, my memories changed about the, the assaults and the harassments, the SA stuff, oh, that's actually because of the trauma. My memories get changed and that's really common in trauma, which is weird. And she says that's her, as her excuse, but it's like, but in your previous live stream, you had said that you only said it was your father's friends because your cousin had still lived with you at the time and you didn't want any awkwardness. So you pretended it was your father's friends who had done it, which firstly is messed up when that was her first claim. It's like, oh wait, so you were um, uh, essayed by someone but blamed other people, a bunch of guys, to try and not make it awkward for the other person or yourself or your family because they were a family member. So you just blame some random guys. That's insane. She's, and she goes out and says, like, oh, Mr. Snowflake's the reason why victims can't come forward because he dared question me. It's like he questioned you because you lie and change your story so often, including you're the reason why victims can't come forward. You're the reason why people don't believe victims because you just said that you just randomly blamed a bunch of guys who came to the house as opposed to your cousin because it was more convenient. That's fucking weird. Uh, she obviously ignores like a lot of super chats that are asking her questions. Uh, hilariously, someone asks, oh, if you had like a million dollars, what would you do with it? And she goes, do you know what? I would, I'd probably give it away to the people who need it. That's that's my first thought because I'm a really good person. Yeah, I probably would do that. I'd probably just give it all away to other people who need it. And I was like, oh my God, you're so fucking cringe. You're so fucking, like, no one believes you. Do you not realize that just no one believes you? You're so fucking cringe. Oh, it's it's insane. Uh, especially when she claims that, oh, I put so much work into my videos. She's like, oh, I put so much work into my videos. Zachary Michael has it easy. All he has to do is react. I put so much work into it, bro. You make eight minute videos and part of it is you playing with putty and another part is you blowing up balloons. Stop it. Uh, everything's a buzzword. It's everything's a trauma. She's validated. She's dehumanized. She's gaslit. It is all like a buzzword but just to try and get around. Because she's heard other people use those words and get like a get out of jail free pass. And you can't question her because she's using those buzzwords. That's just what it feels like. At one point, she randomly pretends she doesn't know what swamp ass is. But then says that anyone who says it is mocking a cancer survivor and will be instantly banned. It's crazy because this is another time when she like totally contradicts her story because she first said, "Oh well, I, I, I don't like the swamp ass thing because you're mocking a cancer survivor because I only smelt because of the amount of bleeding I was doing because she was bleeding twenty four seven, but apparently didn't think it was weird enough to get really checked out for it, and apparently no one thought that was weird or anything like that for two and a half years, which is just a, like sure okay, but that was Destiny said that happened when they were together." But then she's just like, oh, well, I didn't have it when Destiny was with me. So and it's like, well, how is it mocking a cancer survivor if Destiny's claimed it was what you smell like when you were both together? Like, it just, it didn't make any sense. It, and, oh, fuck, I, it's going through my notes here. I just suddenly noticed that she, she did another victim thing where she now claims that she has survivor's guilt because of the cancer. And it's like, bro, you just have to turn everything into making you like the ultimate victim. It's like, I, she claimed that she has survivor's guilt because of surviving the cancer. Uh, it's so cringe, but she keeps going, oh, but that makes me a stronger person. I'm such a strong person. Oh, why, why am I able to withstand all this hate? I'm just such a strong person, guys. That's why I can rise above everyone. I'm just such a strong person. And she just pats herself in the ass constantly as she's making, like, five live streams in a row fucking ranting about people online. Uh, but then says, like, oh, but I'm above it and I don't care about it. I don't care about the trolls or anything. Like, then, then stop talking about them constantly every time and then she gets like really weird and vindictive and clearly like angry and it's, it's how you tell she is a vindictive angry like a person who likely is abusive in relationships because when you see her ban people it's like christmas day to her she's like loudly proclaiming she's singing about it she's so happy she's calling them out like, i'm banning you now hey <laughs> get banned yeah that's ban number four you know she's like a vindictive angry person because that is the power she holds over someone 
That's all the power she has, and she revels in the power to ban someone. Because she has no other power. She has no other power, but that is the power she has. Um, really funny that she randomly goes after Destiny because of the dog thing, about the dog being put down, and how that convinced her finally that Destiny was a terrible, awful person, and how she's literally the worst person ever. But she also thinks FFG is a weird person for saving BBJ from um, Foodie putting her down, even though she says putting down an animal when it's not necessary is the worst thing ever, but... Apparently, FFG is still the bad person in that situation, which is weird. Especially because she also talks about Foodie, and she gets upset that Foodie had done a potato mukbang, apparently mocking her after the choking story came out, and says it's, like, the worst thing Foodie has ever done. So, like, everything else that Foodie's ever done, including the putting down the animal thing. The fact that she did a potato mukbang is the worst thing ever. Um... Yeah, she says Mr. Snowflake's the worst person ever. How, how dare he? He's he's just a terrible person. He says Destiny's also a terrible person. And pr by her not talking about Destiny, it proves that how much of a better person she is. And then she goes on to make like four or five live streams about her. And I think the next like video is like titled My Toxic Ex or something like that. So she's made like six videos on her. And it's like, bro, you've made as much content on Destiny now as she has on you. Like, what are you talking about? Um... She also kept really talking about that story where Destiny said she had left her. I'm sorry that you are just staring at a blank screen, by the way. I've noticed this. I kind of hoped I'd get through these notes quicker, but I didn't. I'm so sorry about that. But she talks about, like, Destiny leaving her at the Walmart after the Pookie incident. And she says, like, oh, I should have realized back then, guys, that was such a red flag. It was such a red flag. It's like, the fact that you she let you, you she thinks it's great because she actually talked about how proud she is of herself for leaving the toxic environment, even though apparently... She was the one screaming at Destiny and then stormed off. But she's like proud of herself for having left the argument because it's she, she was getting away and like calming herself down and getting away from the toxicity of Destiny. But Destiny then leaving herself was Destiny being toxic. Destiny not following her and babying her and trying to make up to her is Destiny being toxic, but her storming off is actually a really great thing and good. It is so weird the fucking double standard she has. It is insane that she said all that and didn't even realize it whatsoever especially when she keeps complaining about the like reaction channels having double standards and stuff like that which yes a lot of reaction channels do have double standards that is 100 true and she complains about like oh they're all biased and even zachary michael admits that they're biased and it's like yes they're biased but you do are you aware that like bias is like a normal thing that bias is like a normal thing especially when it's like whose opinion are you going to take amber who like we, we watch and we cover and we know is a pathological liar and a narcissist and all or other person who's like, yeah, there's a bit of wiggle room. We might believe them a wee bit more because we don't know them as well. So there's less reason why we think they'd lie. Whilst Amber, we know very well, so we know. It's like, that's that's what bias is. Bias isn't... Oh, firstly, bias isn't always a bad thing. And secondly, bias is like a totally natural thing. And it makes sense. She uses it as like, up, oh, gotcha. And it's like, no, 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 it's, it, it is normal. The reason people think you lie is because of your long history of lying. That's, that's why people assume you're lying. It's it's not a it's not a gotcha. It's a, it's not a gotcha. The fact is, people think you lie because you lie a lot. That's where the bias came from. Uh, she also really thinks she's a catch, which is really weird. She always acts like, "Oh my god, this person's so obsessed with me. Oh my god, this person's so obsessed. With me. Oh my god, this person's so obsessed with me. Oh my god, this person's so obsessed with me. This person's so obsessed with me. Oh my god, she loved me. She was all over me constantly. She was so obsessed with me. All that kind of shit. And then like." always is claims that all these guys also hit on her constantly it's like bro i'm so sorry you are genuinely incredibly unattractive so i i don't know where we are in this story it's so fucking weird uh she also keeps saying like i have all the evidence and text messages on this phone and she'll hold up a phone then never show any of it not a single text she always says like every story and twists it from what the original person said to making her like the best possible person who's ever existed ever and say and i have all the evidence on this phone and it doesn't show it and it's like that just makes me believe that it's not real because like why wouldn't you just show the evidence especially because you like claims like oh i have all this evidence of destiny doing this and this and i was told i was allowed to say it by the person she's speaking to and people are like okay why don't you show the text no no i'm not allowed to show the text but i was just told by the person that i'm allowed to say that the text exists and it's like bro, <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about that's such that's so weird i'm allowed to say the text exists but i'm not allowed to show them it's like that seems so suspicious that's just so so fucking suspicious um yeah it's kind of crazy um someone pointed out at one point that she makes herself the victim in every situation and pretty much makes everyone else the villain every time and her reaction just says nah i don't and then she goes on to not read any other super chats that like you know call her out or contradict her or anything like that and she also claimed that she's losing money by doing these live streams that's the last note i have she claims that she's losing money by doing these live streams because some of them have been demonetized despite getting like hundreds of dollars in super chats it seems like she has no idea what losing money is 
Like a super chat is like a supplemental thing. She should still be doing videos at the same time. She just is choosing not to. But she's like, say, oh, I'm losing money for doing this. It's like, but, but the, like, yeah, you're demonetized. But the first time people click on it, you'll still get the ad advertisement for it. There are ads playing throughout the videos. She said herself, oh, I've just been notified of ads playing here. And then she'll just sit there and just stare at the screen pretty much and not really talk about anything. Just waiting for like the ad to be over so people so people are there <laughs> again. Because she, she, you know, she's, she's an artist. She needs to be performing to people. Um, so it's just it's weird that she has no idea what losing money means. It makes it sound like she's paying YouTube to be able to fucking live stream. It's so weird. But yes, those are my notes, guys. Uh, we're going to get into this here. It's 15 minutes of me recording these notes. Uh, who knows? Maybe we'll fucking ply through this and I'll be done in like five fucking minutes and it'll be a 20 minute video. Who knows, guys? I'm so sorry that you guys kind of just stared at a blank screen there for a while. Okay, let's go. But yes, guys. Um... I hopefully should be back to uploading more again in the future now. Hey guys, so hey, uh, this is not an ideal setup, but I'm in my bed and I have some laundry I have to do. Cracker, um, we just did first. This is probably the last little bit I'm going to read out of this notebook just because it's so much to sit and watch these like compilation videos and everything and I'm just basically after. She seems more deflated. She seems more deflated now than she had, uh, had been in the previous video. She does seem a lot more deflated, like sad, like sighing and stuff like that. Sure. Oh god, I forgot about her fucking writing her the name of her YouTube channel on her fucking notebook. The unbearable cringe. Me and Dana get together and are basically living together. It's pretty much all from memory anyway. Like it's like it's not gonna be a point of me watching videos because I'm not gonna be mostly in them or surrounded by them. Um, so we'll start with February of 2017, and I think I've only got February. To I'm probably just gonna skip through to her actually talking about something with Amber. If it's gonna be a lot of this is Dana related. Busy, obviously, and my phone was in the living room. We were in the bedroom, um, and when we came back out. I want to say Amberlynn had Snapchatted me a picture of my car in Dana's parking, <laughs> Dana's driveway, and all that. And it also upset me because oh my uh, god, oh well, Amberlynn wanted. Oh my god, how are you so? Are you speaking so slowly? Still at one point five speed. Pretty much what what is happening is like she thinks she was in a relationship with Dana at this point, but she had definitely broken up with Amberlynn, and she was at Dana's house like hanging out, and apparently Amber was like sending pictures. Of like her car in Dana's driveway because Amber's like creepy and obsessive. Because Amber even talked about this in her live streams where she was she admitted the bit. Like I don't know why you'd fucking admit this. Like no matter what context you think you can twist it in your head, you, you sound fucking mental. Where she was talking about the Yes, I did I did want her to phone me every single lunch break to talk to me. Yeah, but I was only for like a minute or so, you know, just for a minute or so, because I wanted her to phone me and tell me how much she loved me and stuff like that. I was like, bro, why the fuck do you not think you signed mental? She thought it was any a, a good way to write off by saying it's like, oh well, I had guessed at this point, like I s magically sensed in my brain that she was emotionally cheating on me with people and stuff like that and, and was wanting to cheat on me with people, so that's okay. And I was like, bro, you sound fucking crazy. One thing I quickly want to kind of mention here, just in regards to the the Destiny thing, is like she's around me talking about the cash thing, which is the dog that got put down that Amber has such a big issue with suddenly. But it, it's it's just it's it's so Destiny because she's talking about it and she's talking about how the adoption process went and what their thought process for adopting the dog and all was and what breed they wanted and what gender they wanted. And you sick, bro. None of this matters. None of this matters to the story. Get past all of it. Like, I know I talk a lot of shit and ramble, but f holy fuck, bro. It's a okay, I'm just going to jump in here because we're still working through this fucking cash story. We're at the at the bite now. But it's so weird because so weird, she's bringing up that the mother wasn't a very good mother of the, of the two-year-old, the toddler who got bitten anyway. And how she regrets not having done more because she thinks about that child every day and how bad the mother was and all. And it's like, this is so weird to bring up in a story about this dog bite. Because if you, if you felt like that, like she's not a responsible person and she doesn't handle the kid well, but you're like worried about leaving a dog with like children and other dogs because your dog has displayed aggressive nature before why would you then choose to leave your dog in a house with someone you describe as a bad mother who you don't think was very good at being a parent or very responsible with a do another dog and also a young child in the house that doesn't make any sense i, I saw someone had commented and just said amber and destiny should never be allowed to have animals again and yeah that's really what i'm feeling here like they're all just seem like why why is everyone involved in girl world why are they all terrible with animals but think they're like i i'm such a dog mom oh my god i'm such a fur baby mom and they're all awful people with fucking animals 
Okay, so we're gonna go to the end of the cash story, where it pretty much is just everything you expected. The dog continued to be aggressive, continued to not really mingle with the family well, kind of all over the place. They eventually made the decision to put the dog down. Instead of putting it down by taking it to a vet, they put it down by old yellowing it. Um, she said that's a cultural thing, it's a southern thing. I, I, I don't really know. I think, like, I, I, why not just take it to the vet to get it put down, like, you know, humanely, um, I, I don't know, the whole, whole, whole thing's mess, it's not really something I like, particularly like talking about, she did say that, that she don't, like, this isn't really Amber's thing to talk about, which I kind of agree with, somewhat, because it is so weird that Amber is making a big song and dance about how she has all this tea, tea she could spell on Destiny and all this stuff, but she keeps bringing up the dog thing, which literally had nothing to do with her, like, at all, like, she maybe babysat the dog a couple of times, when it was a young, apparently, but it, generally, the story has nothing to do with her, and it was. And uh, Destiny said it was an Amber story to tell. Kind of get that. Kind of agree with that. However, they're in a, sh a shit flinging contest at this point, so I don't really, I don't really get her suddenly being indignant about Amber bringing up something that's like, oh, it wasn't her place to talk about it. It's like, eh, well, whatever. I would have just brought up the fact that uh, Amber's like a shit pet owner herself, like, and people repeatedly are able to joke about her murdering a fucking cat because she wanted to get her own cat. You know, the, the fact that that is something you can reasonably joke about in regards to Amber Lynn Reed, Amber really has no shit she can toss in regards to, like, pet care. I'm really just checking in here to say I was so bored that uh, I started watching uh, the, 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 the battle at Lake Changjin. Uh, <laughs> just... God, this is so fucking boring. Uh, yeah, we're, we're only got a few more minutes left. But yeah, she stopped talking about and she's just talking about the, the Dana stuff now. Really, there's literally no reason why this needed to be 50 minutes long. But 20 minutes was probably dedicated to the cash thing, which just felt like it, it is so... It's so much information for something that is as simple as, look, unfortunately, the dog became aggressive. Yes, could we have handled it be better in a lot of ways? Certainly. However, it's really not Amberlin's business. I don't get why she's trying to gra grandstand about it when she's a piece of shit as well. Like, it did not need to be so, so long. Um, yeah, and j yeah, it's just kind of kind of weird, kind of pointless, her talking about how, how she drove Amber places still. It's like, yeah, probably did, I guess. Like, right now it's a... Well, I, I, drove, I drove her, like, like, a bunch of places... After even after we broke out, I was still driving her places, and Amber's sitting in her life and going, "Well, I give her money, you know." It's just like, okay, you're both fucking cringe. You're both fucking losers. Cool, 100. We get it. Uh, so I'm gonna go back to watching my my Chinese my Chinese propaganda film. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna go back to watching my Chinese propaganda film. Um, here, guys, <laughs> on the other screen. <laughs> On the other screen, whilst, whilst she's doing whatever the fuck she's doing here, guys. So, hey, let's have fun. Uh, yeah, so the end of it was, uh, was a little bit more interesting than pretty much the majority of it. So much, so interesting, I even stopped watching The Battle of Lake... God, what the fuck is it called? I, can't, I, I, won't, oh, I won't be able to remember it off the top of my head. Changjin. <laughs> the Battle of Lake Changjin from the Korean War. Uh, it, it, was, it was interesting, I would actually maybe stop watching that and pay attention to this again. Pretty much what had happened is she brought up that... Um, you know, she had texted Dana because Amber had tried to throw it in her face. Even though Amber, you know, like saintly Amber, who's just so far above this and has only made five live streams on it. You know, so so far above it, who who isn't going to diss any any dirt herself because she's just too nice a person for that. Randomly brought up that oh by the way, just so you know, Le Lexi um, or whatever the fuck Destiny's new girlfriend is. Uh, Destiny's texting Dana just so you know. I'm just so you know she's protecting her behind your back as well. You know, so like Amber was like knee deep in the shit as well. Um, she gave like a totally credible reason for why she did it and that her girlfriend, sorry, slash fiance knows. And yeah, and she got a bit teary eyed when talking about um, Dana having miscarried and everything like that. And I came across just a lot more genuine than, uh, than Amber. Now, um, after watching all this back and forth, do I still think, like, like I had previously, that the two of them are working together? I don't think so anymore. Um, I don't think so anymore. Uh, Amber, after, especially after watching Amber's live streams, I think, um, because I know people thought it was suspicious that they're still texting each other. I just think that's probably because I think they're both just awkward weirdos, um, in general. And Amber in particular texting her wouldn't surprise me because Amber's a very manipulative person. Um, but I do think that it, it's, it's not something that was set up. I do think that Destiny's clearly doing it for attention and to grow themselves on YouTube. However, I, because Amber randomly trying to throw extra shit on top 
to smear Destiny and Destiny's reaction to it makes me believe it's a lot more real. Um, so yeah, I, 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 that's kind of where I'm feeling. Uh, yeah, so we're, we're finally caught up. Time to get back to the um, de the Amber Amberlin videos. Need to get this one posted up, and then we'll start working our way through those. So yes, guys, I'm back. Um, the Potato King has returned. I do hope you all have a good time. Take care of yourselves now. Bye bye.